Okay, so I've done a few talks for people, and I and I and I get a number of uh, the same questions out of people when they, uh, you know, they look at the uh, shit hits the fan scenario, you know, and a, a complete breakdown of systems or something. It's you know when you're concerned about an economic failure, these are legitimate concerns. Um, I don't think it's the most likely scenario personally, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. And people ask me a lot of questions about what I think things will look like that. Now I'm not going to give away the plot of what the most common question is that I get. Um, I'll give that away at the end, but I'm going to read this section because it's, it's sort of relevant to my answer. Cause the answer that I give, like without giving away the question yet, the answer that I typically give to people, they don't seem very happy with um, it, it's not a very satisfying answer. And I can understand, but after I read this section to you, it, it will become more clear why I give the answer that I do. So the death of the Zimbabwe dollar. For a few years, this is a, a, a little uh, quote from a guy, CEO of a manufacturing company. For a few years, you could find notes floating along the streets. Even the beggars didn't pick them up. They wanted clothes and food. You know, your money is worthless when you see it lying on the ground. So here's a, here's some a section I'm going to read. Making simple payments for goods and services during hyperinflation was like catching fleeing mice with chopsticks. The prices kept scampering away. Try as you might, you just couldn't pin them down. In Zimbabwe, prices rose incessantly, many times even while people stood in queues in stores to pay. Payments that would normally be a cinch to calculate became complex brain teasers and unique and unusual problems arose in day-to-day -day transactions. Pricing predicaments. We used to sell our sand and equipment in quadrillions of Zimbabwe dollars. No one practically knows how much a quadrillion really is. Have you ever heard of such a number? That is 15 zeros. 15 zeros. How can you make a profit when inflation is so high? It all becomes meaningless. That was the C CEO of an in, uh, industrial sand business. With huge numbers of zeros, it became a conundrum trying to calculate even the most basic purchases. If, for instance, you purchase six eggs and each egg cost uh, 23 quadrillion dollars, how many notes would you need if you had denominations of $750 billion and $500 billion. Not easy. Because we're not used to those kind of numbers. They just don't, you know, dividing two into 10 is one thing, but 750 billion into four quadrillion or 23, quad, it, it gets nuts, right? In particular, children and older people struggled with the calculations. Through my interviews, I heard stories of pensioners being unable to calculate payment from the money they had. Often the elderly didn't have the right denominations, but only found out when they got to the front of the queues. In confusion and desperation, many would give up and leave the stores empty-handed if another person in the queue didn't help them. Brutal, right? Ordinarily simple sums which children could calculate at lower denominations became very complex. Many had to shop with calculators. Even the basic calculators weren't good enough. This is where it really gets crazy. They didn't have enough space to record all the zeros. And there's a limited amount of zero you can get on a calculator. The same applied to accounting systems. Obviously, we're talking about like Sage or QuickBooks or something, right? The daily transactions couldn't be recorded electronically. I interviewed one business owner who had an accounting system that could handle the transactions of the size of the Russian economy. Even then, it couldn't cope with the numbers of zeros. So a, a software system that could handle the entire Russian economy could not deal with the number of zeros in the Zimbabwe economy. Even then it couldn't cope with it. I said that already. When the accounting systems ran out of space for zeros, people had to give up accounting. Think about that for a minute. Many converted their records into units of billions or trillions, but as prices accelerated every month, it became impossible to compare monthly accounts. No one budgeted any longer since budgets relied on a certain value of the currency, which changed daily apparently hourly in some places. Some companies turned to recording their transactions based in an alternative metric, but those caught doing this would be jailed. So that's as far as I'm going to read for now, but I'm going to come back to this question that I've gotten probably at least a dozen times. People will ask me, well, what do you think the value of silver will be in a, you know, crap hits the fan 
scenario. And I said, well, from my understanding, I said, what you better plan for is just about any number because no one can predict. This shows how hard it is to predict what the valuations will be. It's anybody's guess because it'll be constantly moving if we get into a, you know, if we get into that kind of scenario where systems completely break down and this occurs at the same time, some level of hyperinflation occurs at the same time, it's anybody's guess. Even a moderate inflation might be difficult to guess what the transactional value of silver would be. So let's say systems completely go haywire and accounting systems and stuff break down like this um, for this reason or other reasons. Um, and you have to do some sort of a transaction to, you know, to settle a debt with somebody and you choose to use silver or gold or, you know, transact in Bitcoin or whatever it is you happen to have, um, that's going to be a, a negotiating position at the time because nobody can say based on the values today what the values will be then. And like as I've demonstrated before in previous videos, silver is quite undervalued. So what do you go with the dollar value that the system currently assigns to it through the spot price? Is that what you do? Or do we just make it up between two people? And probably my answer to most people that I said isn't very satisfying is it's going to depend on you and the other person on the end of that transaction at the time. I know you'd like to give me something that you can um, just, you know, hold, you know, in your, uh, in your answer box and just, you know, when the time comes, yeah, well, so somebody told me that I should do this. That, that's not going to mean anything, in my opinion, at the time of transaction further down the road. So the unsatisfactory answer is the only answer. Unfortunately, you're going to have to be very savvy as they showed here. Old people and children had a really, really difficult time if someone didn't help them because the numbers, they couldn't calculate more calculators. So it's going to be um, a moving target is basically what the answer is. So anyway, I just thought I'd go over that because this is something people get really hung up on that are thinking, you know, I'm buying some of my silver for, you know, down the road and, and, you know, a, a bad scenario and they're not, not wrong to think that. I mean, I'm not thinking that systems will break down permanently. Of course, there's always a, you know, when something breaks, human ingenuity steps in and tries to repair it, but there could be an extended period of time where there's just no, uh, no way to transact. I mean, you could have banks closed for a month while they get their books in order, who knows what's coming. Um, this is going to be a very catastrophic financial system that we're coming into. I hate to be the bearer of doom all the time, but it is what it is. You, you can't ignore it. You can't hide it. You can't run from it. And I mean, if you're standing on the railroad tracks and you don't know it and there's a train coming, would you want someone to tell you? I certainly would. And um, there's a big train coming in this. So something I'm going to do now, too, that I never do before. I'm not a big, you know, promoting myself on YouTube, but I think these talks are worthwhile for people. I try to really keep um, my talks simple. I mean, I struggled over the years. I've been a long time studying this stuff and I didn't, wasn't trained in it. So I've spent a lot of hours studying this stuff and, and because I struggled with it, not having a background in it, um, I had to get down to very rudimentary, um, ideas and stuff. And so I find a lot of people that are trained in economics or trained in finance, they tend to talk with a lot of jargon and and stuff like that. And I, I understand why they do that. That's the same with any industry. It's just a shortcut, a way to get things more efficiently to discuss something. If you can use one word to avoid an explanation, all the better. But for those of us on the outside, it's difficult. So I always try to keep my explanations and my, I always try to use scenarios if I can, because I find an example works really well. So my point in what I'm saying here is I think these are very valuable things for people to know. So I'm going to start asking people, share these videos with people, if you would, please like the channel, subscribe to it, do your part to try to help get this out there, send it out to a few friends and stuff to listen to, because I think these can really help people. And there's going to be a lot of people needing help soon. Right now, we're in a bit of a eye of the storm, I think, it, it, that, that it's building. You know, we had some bank fillers there earlier last year and, and uh, some things like that. But that's coming back again. That's just the first shot across the bow, guys. I'm just warning you. Um, we saw this in 08. It started with a trickle and then a little bit of a lull and then another group and then a bit of a lull. And then the, the problems started to come closer together. And then boom, it was the, you know, the big guys went down and that's coming back. It's, it's inevitable. But for those of us that are watching the numbers behind the scenes, this is, 
an inevitable consequence. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So like I said, like, share, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. I'm going to start trying to promote the channel a little more now and asking people because, you know, it's easy to just watch a video and click off to the next one. So do your part, guys. Like, share, subscribe, particularly share it. Send it out to a few friends that you think might benefit from it or are interested in this type of thing. And um, help, help us out here if you don't mind. We do this all for free. I don't, you know, promote... I don't sit here and do constant promotions of our business, you know, but I'm going to start doing that too. You know, come and check out Durham Precious Metals, guys. We have, we run a good, uh, good ship here. Our customers are very satisfied with us and like us. So they say, and uh, we can help a lot of you, you folks out that are running into issues, you know, going forward. So that's all I have to say on that folks. Thanks for listening and have a great day.